Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James, where I do what I want, when I want, and today I wanna to get into some astrology. More specifically, my in-depth rising sign series, and today we're gonna to get into Capricorn. Now, before we get into the intricacies and the awesomeness that is Capricorn rising, let me tell you why I'm doing this series to begin with. Now, as a predictive astrologer, the things that I look for in a chart all come down to the rising sign. The rising sign builds the chart. You know, a Capricorn rising is different from a Pisces rising because, not because of the, the sign itself, but because the way the birth chart is built is going to be completely different and that maps out the scope of your entire life. You know, um, this shows me how your mother was. This shows me the career you're going to find yourself in. This shows me the love and marriage partners that you always attract, whether you like it or not. And so if that sounds good to you, let's get into Capricorn Rising. So with Capricorn Rising, you are going to be ruled by the Taskmaster Saturn. You are going to be ruled by the very goal-oriented, very, you know, Taskmaster-driven Saturn. You are going to be someone that is very, very, very goal-oriented and you know Saturn puts you through the ringer and is teaching you a lot in this life about success and grounding and maintaining and building and ascension within your career and who you are as far as building your legacy in this life you know I've never seen an unsuccessful Capricorn rising I've never seen a Capricorn rising who was down and out and didn't have a goal or didn't have ambition that's just not the way the universe works and so for me, I always see that like you being built by Saturn, you're gonna be someone that is a no 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 games type of person. It's like, why are you in my face? Do you gotta do you do you got the bag for me? Are we gonna sign a contract? Okay, what's going on over here? Mm -mm, gotta go then. See ya. Like, or just get out of my face. Like, because you've got bigger and better things to do. And so people could see you as someone who's very unemotional or very money hungry or just very successful. You're going to show up in themes of that where you are just very, you're by the book. You look like this is the CEO placement. This is the Donald Trump's of the world. This is the 1% placement of the world, of the zodiac. And so, you are always gonna find yourself in high positions. You are gonna find yourself in successful environments. You are gonna find yourself in the creme of the crop of society. And whether you are born into that or you find yourself in that, you will always find yourself in those environments. And that is your destiny. Your destiny is to assimilate into the 1% of society, into the, to the creme of the crop part of society and to build a legacy for yourself in some shape or form and although this sounds amazing although you know you have been blessed with the energy and the 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 wherewithal to do this that does not make it easy if anything that makes it harder and there's a more responsibility on you to do this and so for you it makes you a very unemotional person or someone who it's like emotions last logic first you know so with Saturn in the first house you're probably gonna have a very slender appearance. You're probably gonna be someone that is very stoic, very like unemotional on your face, very resting bitch face, or as I like to call it, resting, I'm gonna get this bag face, you know? Um, and yeah, so with Aquarius in the second house, you are gonna be somebody that you value bringing something to the table to humanity. You don't believe that, you know, I'm just here to be here. It's like, no, I'm here to bring something to people that will change them for the better. And it's like, you know a solution. You have a product, a thing, uh, an advice, something that you give that to humanity that makes you a lot of money and that is gonna be in your money house of the second house of your values and how you cultivate money is going to be you bringing something to the table to humanity to the world and you probably already see that within your life is that you have to be in the public around the public dealing with the public and bringing something to the public that changes the way people live now with your third house in Pisces this is gonna mean that you are ruled by um, Jupiter and Neptune in your third house of your communication. So when you communicate, you can get people on your side very well and very easily. You know, you are probably a very dreamy and an imaginative 
figure in your mind and this probably is what helps you see the goals in your mind and see the visions in your mind but when you communicate you are better able to get people on your side because you teach and you preach and you have a very jovial way of getting what you want across to people where it doesn't feel too brash or it doesn't feel too um, harsh you know like when it comes down to it you the way you communicate is very like abundant you you create abundance when you speak or when you communicate and when you relay the ideas that are in your mind um, so with fourth house Aries this is gonna mean that you are you have Aries in the fourth house of your mother and your childhood and so growing up you probably had a mother that taught you independence or you probably are someone that has power struggles with your mother or power struggles within your home in general like there was probably a lot of competition or unspoken competition within your family dynamic in some shape or form growing up and this could be with or at risk of it, you could be in competition with your mother. Your mom could be in competition with you. You could be someone that had a lot of headbutting or power struggles with your mother or your mom was a very strong, fiery figure in your household. Maybe a single mother you grew up with. Or, and so now in your life, you're like, you know what, I don't wanna live how my mom lived and I want a better life for myself. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna double it back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna build something for myself so that I never end up in that situation or I'm gonna show my mom that I can be the best. You know, it's, it's things like that. So with fifth house Taurus, this is gonna mean that Venus is in your fifth house. And so you are graced with when you go out and when you are in public and when you're having fun, you have a very graceful way about you and you also find very ease and comfort and beauty when you go out again. With you being a Capricorn rising, when you go out as a Capricorn rising, you're only gonna have the best. You're gonna be the best. You're gonna be at that table with the bottles. You're gonna know the people that's got the reserved seating in the back room, and that is energy of Venus. Fifth house is fun and activities and your social activities when you're out dating or out with your friends, and so you being graced with Venus in this yeah, and with Taurus, oh yeah, that's money. That's money, honey, like you are blessed in that area. So do you see how everything reads like a book, kind of like with Capricorn being in your first house, remember I already said you're gonna show up in the world as somebody that is in the upper echelon of the world. And so with fifth house, the house of your fun, when you go out, when you're having dinner, when you're with your friends, Venus is here with Taurus, so that's money, honey. Like, you're, you're graced. Like, you have been blessed, kissed with the upper echelon. Like, whatever you do is always going to be easy because money equals ease equals comfort equals luxury. And that is what it always is when you go out. So, with Gemini in the sixth house, this is going to mean that in your day-to-day -day it requires you to communicate. You are someone that whatever you do for your job, whatever you do for your work, not only requires you to be a social figure, but it requires you to delegate and communicate and be somebody that relays information back and forth and like you know it requires you to be very social and very like your job is not a job that you know you sit in a cubicle and you just crunch numbers and nobody knows your name and you don't talk to anyone all day whatever you do requires you to talk you are somebody that is talking all day now with seven house in cancer seven house in cancer is gonna be ruled by the moon so you know the partners and the marriage partner that you're gonna attract is like with capricorn rising whether you are a man or a woman you are going to carry very masculine features they say that saturn is the father right so the father is what the father is the breadwinner the father is the the father that needs the massage at the end of the day because he's been out there doing all the hard things and whether he wants to or not he has a responsibility to bring home the bacon right and so again whether you are a man or a woman or a they or a them whatever you identify as when saturn is in the first house you are going to be under that energy of there is a great responsibility on you and so with that great responsibility on you it can kind of harden you you know it can kind of make you someone who like i said before puts emotions last because you gotta pay that bill, you gotta do that rent, so you gotta cry, you ain't got time to cry, you know? And so I'm saying this because 
the counteractive balance and the partners that you attract, you attract the mother of the zodiac. You attract the moon and someone who can come in and say, hey babe, how are you feeling? I know you've had a hard day and I know you brought home all the money and you know, I don't really care about the money, but how are you? How are you doing? And they wanna know, you know, they, they wanna tend to your wounds and they wanna hug you and hold you tight and give you a shoulder to cry on and a shoulder to rest on. And even though you'll be reluctant to show that you will appreciate that and those are the types of marriages that you will find yourself in and the type of energies that you will find yourself in so even though you have cancer on the seventh house and you may not attract a cancer i'm not saying you got to go out there and find a cancer sign but this person could be a leo but they're going to have a lot of cancerian energy of like just being able to heal you and be emotionally emotionally present for you, you know, because that's what you need more than anything. I think that you being a Capricorn rising, although success is very important to you, we all need somebody to just rest our head on at night. And I think that that is what, that, no, I don't think that is what you will attract. Um, now with Leo in the eighth house, you're gonna be someone who is, you shine in the bedroom, you shine at getting other people's resources, you shine at really, um, Again, you could have been born into money. You could be born into these things. And so with Sun here, you could be getting an inheritance from your dad. You could be, your dad could be very wealthy. Um, and you'd probably get an inheritance from your dad or just from your lineage and your family. With Leo, the Sun, in the eighth house, you are going to be someone who you know what people want and you know how to offer that to them. You are also somebody that you can transform people in places and situations by what you offer. Now, with ninth house in Virgo, this is gonna mean that your education required you to be very, very, very meticulous and it required perfection with whatever you do or with whatever you were taught in school. And when you travel, you find that you also have to be very, you're by the book when you travel. You are someone who's got all your ducks in the row. You know what terminal you're going to. You know how much, how much to pack, what to pack, when to pack, what can go on the plane, what can't go on the plane, when the plane leaves. You are very, very meticulous and very detail-oriented when it comes to your travel and your education. And when it comes to your, you know, when it comes to your spirituality and your higher beliefs, you are someone that, you're a very practical person. You're not somebody that gets all up in the ethers and in all this and you know you even looking at this video would probably be very surprising for me and this would probably be my least watched video because with Capricorn Risings it's hard for a lot of Capricorn Risings to be very woo woo or very spiritual. With Virgo in the night it's it's practicality first you know you'll attract your your Cancerian moonlight partner that will handle all the woo woo and magic and all that but you again it's like look where's the bag at? Where is the bag? What's the education that I need to get in order to get the bag? And that is how you think with your ninth house in Virgo. With Libra in the 10th house, this is gonna require you to be very diplomatic within your career. You're gonna to need to be somebody that, you know, at the end of the day, you get the last say on what is the outcome and what is right and what's wrong within your career. It's gonna require grace within your career and for you to, I don't know if I said it already, but it's gonna require you to be very, very diplomatic someone who is like you know you're weighing out all the options and you're seeing what is good and how to be fair and think of it like a ceo right a ceo gets the last say and a ceo also has to carry themselves with a certain amount of decorum and grace as well they can't be they can't play favorites too obviously and they have to weigh out things right and they get the final say and that is what libra in the in the 10th house is. So now with Scorpio, with Scorpio in the 11th, Scorpio in the 11th is gonna be someone who, you know, you're gonna have very deep and transformative relationships as far as like with the public. You know, you are gonna be again, somebody that brings something to the table to humanity that transforms and you're gonna be transformed by the public as well through what you offer ironically enough um, and you are going to be an intense figure within the public you are going to be somebody that has a presence and an intensity about them 
and that could be because you're so successful you know you, you have power and influence and wherever you go you shift the room you shift the atmosphere um yeah so now with 12th house in sagittarius this is going to mean that for you you are someone that is very abundant when it comes to foreign travels and foreign lands you'll probably be very successful if you move away from home um now these things will change depending on where the house lords are and if you would love to know more about that hit my links below or email me for a birth chart needle reading and i would be happy to show you what those are because everything changes once the planets your unique planets hits a birth chart i'm giving you a general overview of what these things could play out as but once the planets hit it's it's all different you know and i would love to show you and relay those messages should you have any questions what your natal chart is doing and what your purpose is here on the planet and what you could be doing and how you can live up to the best of your potential so if that sounds good to you hit my links below email me for a birth chart reading and i will see y'all on the next video all right bye